There we are. All right. That's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I, I looked over there and it's like, it's like, oh crap, that's the Philly one. Holy shit. What the hell? So uh, <laughs> I'm like, damn it. Oops. So I had to, had to wait. Anyway, uh, XP, X cryptics, uh, cryptics cryptid. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Data's so bad for this. Okay. Uh, any idea what that means? <clears throat> he's, he's from your channel. So any idea? Huh? Mine? No. Yeah. I have nobody in my chat. Well, nobody he's not on mine. Well, he must be from I, X. I, I, he must be on X. Okay. He must be on X. X marks the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. X's icon. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. Watching this icon. on X. I like it. Hey, welcome, 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 everybody on X. Uh, you know, I, I yeah. don't know if we can respond to you there, but uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, data's so bad for this. I think you mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of mixed signals about this particular one. Uh, all right. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> yeah, how's the one in the cool. chat? Yeah, there cool. you go. There you go. Cool. He, must be, chat. he must already be in his gym jams because, uh, you know, I, already, I yeah, sent him the link. He's, so. Yeah, he's... Uh... Yeah. On, now he's on my channel on the, uh -huh, the uh -huh. chat over there. Okay, all right, all right. Cool. Welcome in. Yeah. Welcome in, Mr. Cruel. Welcome right. in, Cruel by Red. Okay. Yeah. Uh anyway, this guy uh that we're gonna talk about today. Uh he uh he's pretty much he's either a supernatural or he's a uh really athletic creep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, there's really nothing in between here well, because uh, it, uh, humano humanoid cryptid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because he 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 does some crap that is like really really. Uh, you know, some of it seems to be supernatural, but some of it could be just perception. You know, uh, uh, supernatural or superhuman. In right, that uh, right. he has the uh, um, humanoid. Cryptid has the appearance of of, of being human like, or having right. you know two right. arms, two legs, a head, and eyes, and all that good stuff. Uh -huh. But yeah, ex, you know, exudes or exhibits uh, superhuman type abilities, and the <laughs> one of those is Spring Healy jumping over twelve yeah. foot high fences. Welcome, Abby. Someone, what's up, Hello. dude? He's here. <clears throat> uh, correction. Here. Correction. Uh, I am not in my jammies yet. I'm still downstairs. Okay. Ah. <laughs> in, in his, so in why his aren't chair. you in here? You've got a link, man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah Bunny sent you a link, dude. <clears throat> yeah, well, anyway. Bunny sent you a link. All right, all right, all right. Well, he just wants to, like, fall asleep in the middle of it, I guess. But <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, well, you know, the thing about this guy is uh, he's, like, legendary, but as a, at the same time, uh it, it's it's like there's like at like factual information about him like official information uh, about something ha something happening about this time but then there's all the anecdotal evidence and the anecdotal evidence is like way crazy shit like he's breathing blue flames and he, you know and got yeah the claws on his hands right but then yeah. the anecdotal and then, but then the official like information is, oh, this creep's been going around and like, uh, you know, uh, attacking women and uh, and then running away at, at abnormally high speeds and over jumping over fences and stuff. And uh, and so, like uh, like we say around here, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Uh, hold in on, the middle. maybe it was Spring Hill Jane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hey, anyway, uh, uh, but you know, uh, what reason why we say the truth is somewhere in the middle is uh, because uh, we think that between the crazy stories and the actual physical, like some concrete stuff, right there in the middle somewhere is going to be the truth. There's, okay, there's, there's, there's so, music playing somewhere. Where is the music coming from? Because it ain't. Me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it sounds like it's from your background. Abby. Might, might be mine. Let me, let me let me try something here. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> werewolf, werewolf. Exactly. Uh, werewolf, werewolf. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Suit yourself. Um, I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
uh, you know, w one thing about him is he got the penny dreadfuls, and when you get the penny dreadfuls, that's when everything goes wacky. That's when. That's yeah. They started do uh, embellishing a lot of things uh, yeah. with that, and you know, everything gets just blown out of the uh, out of the air. I mean, just out of the water when you get the penny dreadfuls. And better. Uh, yeah. Better. Yep. Yes. Better. Appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, you get you get into those uh, storybooks and stuff like that uh, versus the police actual police reports. Right by these individual witnesses. Well, the I Lord think, Mayor of uh, of London was getting a bunch of letters. Yeah, um, because basically um, there's a dichotomy between rich people and poor people, right? And oh, the poor, poor people didn't even go. They like the the police was like only used for rich people concerns around this time in Victorian England. Okay, they I'm didn't like, really investigate. Yeah, they didn't really investigate crime below a certain level. Okay, if you, yeah, pretty much. you know, if, if you were from like a certain part of, of like Whitechapel or whatever, yeah. uh, I, I think Jack the Ripper changed that. Um, you know, quite frankly, because it got so sensationalized and people uh, wanted like results, and the the cops are like, I don't want to go to Whitechapel. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> me. But this happened before. Uh, this actually happened before Jack the Ripper uh, yep. did his thing, and so uh, we're talking uh, around about 1837. I think Jack the Ripper was way later. Around, uh, uh, yeah, he was. I think about 40, century. 50 years later. Right. Uh, so, uh, so, so this is like a precursor to Jack the Ripper. As a matter of fact, people think that's why they called him Jack the Ripper because they thought it was a Spring Hill Jack. Because oh, he had, he did some similar things like Spring Hill Jack had like these knives for hands, right, or, or fingers, and yeah, uh, it, uh, one of the witnesses said he had cold, uh, clam, cold hands, very uh, yeah. metallic feeling, whatever, you know. Well, like, you know, yeah. well that that um, so let's let's get to into the descriptions of him. Uh, there are some things that that seem to be uh, common. Okay, uh. Okay, so he's uh, said to describe be claimed to see him as having terrifying, frightful appearance with diabolical physiognomy, uh, clawed hands, eyes that resemble red balls of fire, and uh, one report claimed that beneath the black cloak he wore a helmet and a tight-fitted white garment like all skin. Many yep. stories always mention a devil-like aspect. Others said he was tall and thin with the appearance of a gentleman. And several reports mentioned he could breathe out blue and white flames, and he wrote sharp metallic claws at his fingertips. <laughs> at least two people claimed he was comprehensible. <laughs> hey, hello. Hello. hello, my apologies, I hadn't checked my messages on Twitter, Twitter, so ah, well, okay, all right, so all right. there we go. Well, I have arrived. Well, if my post, gotta get off the chopper. Hey, <laughs> my co-host would do I his brought him job. In. He popped in and I brought him in. What are you oh, over there oh, looking oh, down oh, at your okay. desk, looking okay. at your papers, going? Well, good for you. Good for he's you. He's wearing a little thanks, skin. Thanks for helping out. Thanks and for helping out. Gloves with a helmet. <laughs> and he's well, he fabulous. <laughs> he's just anyway. so super. <laughs> well, this is going back to that one again, isn't it? Oh <laughs> man. man. <laughs> But they, uh, he also supposedly wears like high heeled boots. Stunning. You know. Stunning. Oh my gosh. I am super. Uh, anyway. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, except that he only attacked like women. So, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he has a little bit of, uh, you know, well, maybe he's jealousy going worse. on or something. Yeah, I don't know. it could be. Maybe he. Doesn't like maybe he Maybe he was jealous because he really believed himself to be a woman. Who knows? Are you saying that Spring Hill Jack could have been trans? A transcripted? It could be. A transcripted. <laughs> a transcripted? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. He was trans before trans. He was a trendsetter. He was a transsetter, <laughs> tra right. Transsetter. A, a transsetter, <laughs> okay. A transcripted. <laughs> Well, let's play our first video. Uh, this this should uh, this should get us into the topic pretty well. There uh, we go. So this is uh, Spring Hill Jack in Nottingham. Okay, uh -oh. ah. watch out. <laughs> so all right, here we go. Reports of Spring Hill Jack date back to the early 19th century, 
An infamous figure of central London, said to be of variant descriptions. A black cloak, a devil-like appearance, tall and thin, dressed as a gentleman. In several reports, including the Allsop case, alleged Jack had blue and white flames coming from his mouth and eyes of red balls of fire, wearing a tight-fit garb of white oilskin with metallic claws. Of the trope most recognisable was his ability to make extraordinary leaps, jumping from building to building, and as such he entered folklore as an urban legend, and a number of sightings have come down the years ever since. There have also been reports of a similar nature up and down the country, and indeed reports around the world. So from London to Limby, we find ourselves looking at the Limby Parish Council created map. This is actually located as a public information notice board in the village of Limby here in North Mossingham. And as you can see here, it says Limby Legends. That actually mentions four of them in fact, but the first one we're going to be focusing on of course is Spring Hill Jack. It says here that a ghost that is said to have left giant footprints here in the snow on Quarry Lane, as well as the creation of pancakes, which is where it finds its origins. Wolf Tree and the Forest Courts at the Top Cross, but we, of course, are focusing on the legend and the ghost, and that is Spring Hill Jack. And also, there is some more detailed references to this held at the Nottingham City Library in the Local Studies Library, which we've had a chance to have a look at. The case of leaping footsteps in the snow, however, mirrors that of the Devil's Footprints phenomena that occurred in the February of 1855 in East Devon, covering a length of some 40 to 100 miles which some people believe to have been made by the devil himself. These appeared not just in open fields, but also over the tops of houses, through gardens and courtyards, and even those enclosed with high walls and through forestry. Just what did happen just adds another level to the mystery of that it is not just the devil's footprints, but that of Springhill Jack himself. The village of Limby, on the B6011 Limby Lane, finds itself unique in the country, with its two village crosses, the North Cross, often called the Judgment Cross, and also a Southern Cross. The Southern Cross has been alleged over the years to have healing properties, with fresh water running beneath the cross. The Southern Cross also once represented the boundary of the once much larger Sherwood Forest, with the engraving of 1663 upon its crest, when this was the case. Just beyond lies Quarry Lane. So here we are, this is Linby known also as Lindeby, as it was mentioned I wrote about in the Doomsday Book of 1086. This village has been here for a very, very long time indeed. And here it holds a secret, here it holds a story, in fact two stories, the first of which is why we're here today, it is the legend and the story of Spring Hill Jack. This village holds one of the last known reports and locations of the indeed Victorian gentleman who was very infamous for what he did, leaping from building to building in single bounds. Did he really come to this village? Did he really do that here as well. Well the reports say yes, it was along this very field just here that he made strides left to right all the way along this very field, bounding and leaving footprints in the snow, seen and reported by witnesses and also by workers the very next day who were going up to the quarry located at the very top of this road. So why, why on earth would you come here? Why would you come to a location such as this? I've got no idea, but if we were to go to the very beyond this field, you have Iron Carl Woods, Weir Mill, and also beyond that you have Annesley Hall. Also up here you have a wood known locally as Devil's Wood, and also to the very right of us we have Papplewick Hall. Do these play into the legends? Do this play into the story? For that we don't know, we can only surmise and speculate. But this is a picturesque location, absolutely beautiful, and in a day such as today, you can only imagine what it must have been like perhaps many years ago when they saw infamous character known as spring -Heel Jack. He was on vacation just strolling along in the field. That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I thought it was interesting the that, 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 that his supposedly origins in the same place they developed pancakes. Hey! <laughs> hey, must be a good place. Yeah. Pancakes, there you go. Pancakes. Those, those pancakes. Pancakes. pancakes right now. Those, those food you, those food you want pancakes. some pancakes? Invented pancakes Chocolate chip before, pancakes with some before maple syrup go. in Canada, eh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, all right. Back away from the gay thing. Uh, you know, I, I, Why? I Are want... you so bigoted? You don't want to talk about that? 
I think we're going to talking about it's that anyway. Did you, did you, did you say that? kind of <laughs> softy this afternoon? <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, all right, we're gonna talk. We're gonna we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, he he has a uh, has a, like a period of time where he was seen uh, between nineteen eighteen thirty seven all the way to uh, nineteen oh four. So it was quite a little. But the there was, the a, first possible, was, there, there was a possible report of him about nine years earlier. Oh, really? Ten years earlier? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the, uh, the report goes. Um, well, I think that's what he called. But the, when he basically jumped over a nine foot high wall. Oh, and right. The, the shopkeeper who reported it to the police. That's uh -huh. you know, he just said some guy and you know wearing a, I think he said he was wearing a, a cape or something and cloak, uh -huh. and he just jumped over the freaking wall. And then uh, intrigued the cops used, so much that they used the uh, force, all right? He used the force I know, right? Over the wall. Come on. Everybody it knows we can all do that. Bring Hill Jackson. Is this the take it. a force user? Oh it's a little hard. It's a little hard to take this guy seriously with the cape. Okay, it's just a little hard. <laughs> but, hey, oh, you know, and the boots. The oh, guy's no. got thigh high boots and a cape. How are we supposed to? Supposed to be, anyway. Well, the I funny thing right. is, is Liberace. Was... What the hell? <laughs> no. Well, Liberace didn't wear the boots. Um, well, he no, didn't wear a cape. That was, that was actually part of the and I leather, mean, that was by common, the way. That leather. Well, there you go. That was probably common <laughs> dress back in like early 1800s. What the heck? The boots well, well, and the capes well, and skin, cloaks. Skin's basically and... leather. So I mean, he, yeah. he was wearing the same thing as Sick Figure and Roy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jump through the hoop, tiger. Come on, tiger. Jump through the hoop. Come here, kitty. <laughs> the tiger's like, I swear he does it to me one more time. <laughs> you want to bite him in the neck. What can anyway. I do to this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> that poor tiger, that stuff, you, you can't wash that out of your mouth, that taste. Anyway. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> anyway, so, all right. So anyway, all the way back to Spring Hill Jack. Uh, a lady by the name of Mary Stevens was walking to Lavender Hill. Yep. God, the gay jokes are just, they just, they just come at you. <laughs> anyway, they just keep coming at you. Uh, anyway, so she's, she was visiting her parents in Battersea. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, on her way through Clapham Common. Uh, Clapham Common. What? Stranger Clapham? Uh, Clapham <laughs> Common. <laughs> Clap ham? Are you serious? Clap ham? Clap them common. Clap them common. Yeah, okay. Clap ham common? I, 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 <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Back Welcome to it. Back to it. All right. anyway. Welcome to the show, everyone, where we can't get anything done. I think I well, think was, Bunny God, intentionally put, <laughs> selected this topic for a political statement. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. Even though this is a very timely topic, evidently. Uh, uh, Apparently. And we might see him on Acolyte, evidently. Anyway. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> all right, so is strong figure, with this guy's boots. Yeah, there you go. Very strong. All right, so. All right. <laughs> you, you got me off here. All right, so 1937. Uh, I uh, lost my place. Anyway, 1937, this guy, he, he like, shows up. And, uh, 1837. Uh, Mary Stevens was his name. 1837. Sorry, 18. It was her name, not his name. Her, her name was Mary Stevens. She's walking from, uh, walking to Lavender Hill from, uh, mm -hmm. Bat passing through Clapham Common. <laughs> a strange figure left at her from a dark alley after immobilizing her with a tight grip of his arms. Ooh. And he kissed her face while ripping her clothes and touching her place with his claws. Violently. Violent. Which, according <laughs> to her description, is... <laughs> wait, wait, but uh, it said, according to her, it, the, it, it was cold and clammy as a, those of a corpse. Okay. And oh, by the way, crap. by the way, this is a, <laughs> by the way, this was like October in Lord England. Clinton. So you think. Yeah. 
everybody was cold at, you know, to the touch in, 19, in, sure. Sure. Yeah. in England. <laughs> cold and clammy. It's like always foggy there, and it's cold as freaking ice. So, you know. It, yeah, of course it seems cold. And clammy. I'm wet. Uh, I have anxiety. Anyway. I'm cold and clammy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so she screamed and they, and the attacker Ninkus. quickly fled from the wet, scene. Wet <laughs> anyway, the commotion brought several residents immediately launched the search for the aggressor, but he could not be found. Okay. All right. So that's the first disappearance. And that was uh, Mary right, Mary yeah. Stevens. Uh, what was Mary the one Stevens. where the girl got beat the shit out of, apparently? Uh well it was um there was a girl okay. uh, in it with her sister, so there was two girls. Yeah, that encountered him. Okay, well, I, I that was that was later on. Something. That was yeah, later on. Okay. The very next one was uh, uh, he jumped in in front of a passing carriage and caused the coachman to lose control, oh. crash, and severely injure himself. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That but one. That's when they first saw him escape by jumping over a nine foot high wall, two point seven meters for you know people in nice. England. Yeah. Uh, while cackling with a high pitched ringing laughter. Okay, so high pitched <laughs> ringing laughter. It was Skeletor. I turn me meet again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, gradually the news of strange character spreads in the press and public gave him the name the Spring Hill Jack. So uh anyway. Oh gosh. Uh so all right, so so far. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we know so far we know that the, he like the word he, of the day is dumpster fire anyways <laughs> <laughs> well Did you say dumpster his, fire his, his, <laughs> his. <laughs> all right anyway all right so i have no idea what I was we know say. his persona it's is really colorful <laughs> yeah evidently evidently <laughs> I don't know why he's like. Uh, he likes uh, oil uh, skin what's, and, what's high, and high boots. <laughs> oh man! I mean, one side oh, yeah, is like the gayest the it's, crypt, it's, crypt it's, don't it's, on record, but on the other hand, know, he only attacked women. So you know, it's these things they always take place. Maybe it was a fashion in, thing. In he hated what they were wearing. The yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know right. he has these portable cameras back then, and it's it's just huh. yeah, we saw that thing and. Yeah, nobody sees these in things. In 1837, anymore. they didn't have portable cameras. I know. It's, just like, it's just like it's just like we've we've got these things and and right. fuck all happens. The gra yeah. right. The right. grainy <laughs> footage of Bigfoot shot on an Apple iPhone. It's like, <laughs> it's like we've got portable <laughs> portable cameras and computers and right. nothing happens. Right. Yeah, where did all the cryptids go? All these I mean, really videos of Bigfoot. They can't tell if it's real or not. Well, we have all this yeah. technology now. Well, if you want to see Spring Hill Jack, just go watch the parade at the Castro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, see you see plenty of people with long nails and, and light leather. <laughs> No, I, I, and I, high, I like, high boots. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to visit shit city USA. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's oh, where they give you maps of where all the turds are located, right? The reason we chose. The reason we chose Spring Hill Jack is it is Open June. It is, it is June. June. <laughs> it is June. And it's June. Yeah. They oh. get a whole month and veterans get one day. There you go. There you go. So uh, anyway, so a few months after these first oh, sightings on the 9th of January, 1838, uh, the Lord Mayor of London, Sir John Cowan, uh, or Cohen, developed, yeah, uh, yeah. revealed at a public session at the Mansion House uh, an anonymous complaint that he had received several days earlier, which he withheld in the hope of obtaining further information. Correspondent signed the letter, a resident of Peckham. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Still keep, keep him going. Keep him going. So Hold the on. All right. All right. All right. So uh, anyway. It appears that some individuals have laid a wager with a mischievous and foolhardy companion that they durst not take upon himself the task of visiting many of the villages near London in the three different disguises, a ghost, a bear, a devil. And moreover, he would not enter the gentleman's garden for the purpose of alarming the inmates of the house. The wager was, however, been accepted, 
and the unmanly villain has succeeded in depriving several ladies of their senses, two of whom were not likely to recover but have become burdens to their families. And in one house, the man rang a bell and the servant came into the open doors. Worse than the brute stood no less than dreadful figure that a specter clad most perfectly. The consequences with the poor girl immediately swooned has never from that moment been in her senses. The affair has now been going on for some time. It's strange to say the papers are still silent on the subject. The writer has reason to believe that they had the whole history at their finger ends, but through an interested motives are induced them to remain silent. In other words, somebody was like, it's been going on a while. Where have you been? Okay. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I mean, back then, man, I mean, these people, they had no entertainment. They only had the, they well, only had the Bible and the preachers uh, that, that like taught it and they didn't have personal copies. They only had like the preacher's word and, and so it, these local preachers, they basically preach hellfire and brimstone because that's how you filled your coffers. And so yeah. they're like filling, they're like filling everybody's heads with all these tales of demons and demonic entities and, and stuff like that. And so they see anything at least a little bit out of the ordinary. They see a shadow, it's a demon, or they see, you know, a, a, a horse like walk through the yard and it looks like hood point hood prints it's like oh that's the devil devil walked through the yard you know the devil, yeah. the devil yeah. footprint. the devil's footprints you know and so well, it's yeah. like that uh well the uh i don't know uh <clears throat> the jane uh allsop case uh -huh. in the february of 38 when she okay. answered a door and some guy uh, answered her door and it was a supposedly a police officer who told her to bring a light uh claiming that we have caught spring Hill jack here in the lane. Oh. So she went out and brought a light. And uh, she, the moment she handed the uh, candle uh, to the supposed cop, they took the cloak off and it was supposedly pre spring heel Jack. And he was vomiting blue and white flame. I love vomiting. Uh -huh. I love that. Um, yeah. From his mouth and his eyes resembled red balls of fire, uh -huh. according to her accounts. So. Or so he was drinking Yeah, he ate your meister. Yeah. <laughs> he had a hot cutty. He's drinking Jagermeister fireball. <laughs> I'm wondering if. Uh, ball and curry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm wondering if, uh, uh, if the light that she brought was like reflected in his eyes, and that's where the red Probably. balls of my fire came Who from. Who knows? Probably. Yeah. But, uh, but okay. Okay, so the possibility exists that okay, uh, so there was a dude who was evidently probably young and spry, and uh, could could basically basically like climb walls and made it look was like it a, the, uh, you know, he he's basically like a parkour. We know parkour guys. It say, looks like yeah, a, yeah. it looks like I can just jump over walls, but yeah. look at what they're doing. Could they're be literally the, could like, be the original gimp. <laughs> yep, there you go. It could, I, for, for a minute there, I sounded yeah. like funny. Said parkour, park, parkour. Park. It's not no. Park it's not a parkour. It's a parkour. <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> one of these you remember, ones. You remember that? P P A R K O U R. It's a sport. You remember, we hey. know what a parkour was. Abby, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Abby Behave yourselves. <laughs> we lived in a park, Abby. Uh, remember a beat dog in the, in the parkour? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Back on topic. Sure. Back on topic. It's a sport, and people yes, can I like know. parkour. People move yeah, parkour. through. If mm -hmm. you watch like the American Ninja or things like that, that's that's what that is, okay? <laughs> and uh, people are capable of through these techniques, which have existed for generations, you know, all around the world, uh, have been capable of like scaling walls and things like that. And uh, and it, lo it looks, I, I saw Jackie Chan do a move, uh, oh, you know, early on. Nuts. That I, I I was like, did he just climb that wall yeah, and then like nuts. jump off of it? Yeah. Um, oh, oh yeah. So there's some yeah. shit he's done is insane. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. it's entirely possible that a very athletic young man who's like perpetually horny, you know, <laughs> started attacking women around this time. Okay. And right. uh, the whole cold and clammy thing. 
Yeah, I mean, the whole cold and clammy thing is like it's the temperature and it's freaking London, so it's always foggy. So everybody's clammy in London. So uh, that's not convincing either. And uh, so. what's, what's what's laughing at? Now? No, what's there what the are original, you laughing at now? The original, uh, the original London gimp was a parkour. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold and clammy because the gimp suit was too anyway. And cold. We are surrounded by children. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. Anyway, continue so, on. Moving on. Meanwhile, back at the topic. All right. <laughs> I used to do this show with a with a with a pothead and it was easier to deal with than this. Holy <laughs> shit. All right. Anyway. I'm sober. <laughs> for now. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, for now. Ish. 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 All right. Ish. Uh, so, okay. All right. Before this completely okay. degenerates, let me go ahead. <laughs> let me go ahead and play our other video. So all right. All right. All right. <laughs> Here you here we be that way. Here we go. Calm down when it, when we're watching the video. Of all the stories I've written about in my home to Liverpool books, I'd say the most popular one is the tale about Spring Heeled Jack. When I was a little kid I used to sit and listen to my grandmother's stories about the old days of Liverpool. And one day we were sitting in front of the fire when she happened to mention a very strange story about a real-life bogeyman who'd been seen by scores of people not only in Liverpool but in London and many other cities and towns as well. And this bogeyman was known as spring Jack. My grand's mother Elizabeth Slemon actually saw spring Jack in the 1880s when she was just a little girl. Elizabeth had been attending Sunday school one evening in October and had glanced out the window to see a shadowy figure running along a row in Everton near St Francis Saviour's Church. Now this silhouetted figure jumped into the air and he seemed to fly upwards. The teacher of the class also saw him and later that night several other people saw the figure of a man come down off a roof and land on the pavement without suffering uh, any apparent harm. The same mysterious figure was seen falling from the steeple of St Francis Saviour in December of that year and he landed with a thump in the snow but he didn't appear to be armed after falling about a hundred feet from the church spire. Now Mike Rann said that a Mrs Hughes who lived in one of the poorly lit courts off Scotland Road saw spring Jack watching her one evening as she went out to get water from a pump in the middle of the court. She described them as wearing a cloak, a tight-fitting costume and the helmet of some sort. She said his eyes were glowing like balls of fire and he had halos of colour around his head and body. And Jack stretched out his arms sideways and a light appeared on his chest and then Mrs Hughes felt as if she'd been struck by lightning as something hit her and left her partially blinded and semi-conscious. The woman's sons thought their mother had suffered a fit when they found her, but an old man who had also witnessed the unearthly instant said he had seen spring Jack take off like a bird after the cowardly attack on Mrs Hughes. Now several other people in the area visited Rose Hill Police Station and reported seeing a sinister shadowy man in black who had been making phenomenal leaps into the air on Scotland Road after dark. Now, the police didn't take any notice of these reports at first, but there later came apocryphal stories of spring Jack attacking police officers across the city, from Great Omer Street to the Wavertree High Street, where the jumping man spat some sort of luminous gas into the faces of the lawmen, making a mockery of them in front of terrified citizens. Some of the older people in Liverpool recalled that this spring Jack had first been reported down in London in 1837. That year he made headlines after scaring night travellers in the Barnes area of the capital. Then one night in 1837 it looked as if Jumping Jack had finally been caught. 
It started with the frantic hammering on the front door of the Alsop family home in the district of Bow. A young teenager named Jane Alsop answered the door and she saw a policeman standing in the fog and shadows. Bring a light! We've caught Springfield Jack down the lane here, the policeman said. Now Jane had read all about Springfield Jack in the newspapers and she said, Yes, sir! And she rushed back into the house to grab a candle she'd been reading a book by. She reached out, offering the candle to the policeman. And by the light of that candle she saw to her horror that it was spring Jack wearing a policeman's helmet, uniform and cloak. Jack had robbed the uniform from a policeman he had ambushed the night before. Now Jane Alsop's legs felt like jelly and she turned and she ran screaming back into the house and she and her two sisters managed to slam the door in the face of spring Jack and then they heard him claw the door and he laughed hysterically before vanishing into the mists of the night. Who was spring Jack? Many theories have been put forward over the years and I have researched the case for some time now and if you want to know more about the Leaping Terror you can read all about his further antics in my Haunted Liverpool books. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told a lot of the uh, the uh, initial stories, but the whole one's about leaping up and leaping off of things and being that fi that high up. Um, I, I've not heard very many of those accounts. Uh, most of them, uh, most of them are basically of him, like, uh, you know, mashing some chick, you know, and then jumping over a, a wall or, or disappearing at an impossible speed or something like that. And, uh, and so a lot of that just like, just seems to be down to, uh, overwrought hysteria, uh, from people who, you know, had no outlet for their imaginations. And so they imagined everything, you know, and a hundred uh, foot, a hundred foot high the, fall in the snow. That's what Jägermeister will do to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In terms yeah. of in terms of f f the, the the flames, is, is it possible he knew circus tricks or performance? Yeah, that's possible. Well, um, you know, they were doing. Man. They've been doing that. They've now, been doing that stuff yeah, all the way back since the Asian. Uh, you know, to yeah, Middle but also Eastern depending on the time of the year, if it was cold, mm -hmm. and your breath is hot well, and cold, in in cold air, yeah. it will. Yeah. You know, look like smoke coming out of your of your nose yeah. and your mouth. So and the candle, the light of the candle as well. Yeah, it could have been that. Yeah, yeah I mean, who knows? Well, uh, he could be blowing yeah. dust in their face. Uh, or you know, she that could have been on LSD. I don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he could have been on LSD. Who knows? <laughs> or L or LDS I, was it? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. It's all, it's the Mormons. <laughs> those, those Mormons, those, those crazy Mormons. Anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, I think it could be a combination of just you know someone embellishing story the 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 account mm -hmm. in some respects. I mean, I, I I thought it was funny that this 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 clip showed the Spring Hill Jack looking like a character from the movie Life Force. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, he had, uh, yeah. I'm Batman. I've got my wings on. I, I know. I was thinking that. Oh. Uh, that that uh, uh, his eyes, uh, the cowl, and then the light. It's almost like Batman or some uh, superhero uh, or something. Yeah. Well, there was a. There's like a lot of the pictures we have was the depictions of Spring Hill Jack are from like Penny Dreadful covers. And uh, yeah. and Bob Kane actually, who like robbed from everybody. I mean, he did, robbed from Tarzan. We know uh, he robbed uh, several illustrations off of uh, the Shadow comics, uh, but he also uh, took like inspiration or not inspiration tracing uh, from <laughs> covers of Spring Hill Jack when he did mm -hmm. Batman. And there's a lot of elements of, of yeah. the yeah the original movie. Batman are it was really. Uh... A lot yeah. different than what we see today, even in well, you, know, you see the one where he's like jumping down on people and he's doing like oh, you know, and he's yeah. got the like the cape. <clears throat> that is like didn't, almost, they, didn't Batman? Kane, Kane basically took that like uh 
Frank, that that's basically exactly a Batman cover early on. When did he come out with? Was it was it the 1930s or 1940s that Batman came out in the comics? Original. Uh, well, I don't know. 30s, I think. I don't know. For because, years though, he was still taking sole credit for Batman. It was actually him and Bill Fingers. Well, Bill Finger actually, uh, he's the one that came up with the uh, uh, the dead uh, the pa dead parents ankle of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, took the back, took the gun out of his hand and made him more of a a, a unique uh, figure that right. used fear, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. fear instead. Um, so mm -hmm. Bill Finger basically, I mean, Bill, Bob Kane's version of him was basically a thug that wore a cape, and, uh, back, yeah, you know, yeah. And, there was uh, originally. Bill Finger, go ahead. There was originally there was uh, those uh, movies, uh, little short subject ones with Batman. The Nets. In the yeah, yeah kind of like you know, just short subject, like 10 15 minute long, kind of like how the Three Stooges was right. and, and Buck Rogers and, and stuff like that. Flash Gordon, yeah. those are all little, you know, those all small, short subject ones. Serial, they're called it was serials. A yeah, yeah, and it, it was a Batman one. Um, mm -hmm. and you kind of think of it, thinking about the pictures I've saw seen of that serial, that kind of reminds me of the of the Spring Hill Jack, the, the style yeah. of the. Is that, the one, is that the one that was called the bot? Is it just was it just called the bot? Yeah, there's one called? there was actually one called the bat, and then there's the Batman. Right. So there's another yeah, one called Batman. Batman. No, okay. Well, you know, the original Batman in the original comics was much darker mm. than he, you know, is oh, well, Bob Kane had him shooting people and yeah. sharing the gun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and Bill Finger's like, uh, well, that's that just makes him a thug, you know. Uh, you know, let's do something sure. different. And yeah. uh, I think Bill Chris Finger Cohen. at Bill Finger created the Batman as we know it, but Bob Kane basically ripped off uh, Tarzan. He ripped off the Shadow, yep. and he ripped off Spring Hill Jack yep. to to bring his uh, vision to life. And Bill Finger took that, you know, rip off vision then uh made something you entirely unique M mellowed out. it out a little bit <laughs> right but uh he actually you know made it more unique uh, but mm -hmm. right. uh but the bottom line though is spring hill jack did inspire a lot of spring hill jack's m movements and a lot of his like way he would jump down and scare people and uh a lot of that, a lot of that was borrowed for uh, the batman's depictions so uh, there's a direct it. link. There's a direct link between Spring, the stories of Spring Hill Jack and Batman. Okay, right. yep. the whole idea that somebody can just like appear out of nowhere, scare the crap out of you, and then fly, uh, <laughs> and then like yeah. you know, <laughs> and then go right back <laughs> into the <laughs> shadows. Yeah. Exactly. And, then, and uh, and so that that concept, uh, that pretty much that's pretty much both Batman's modus operandi right there. You know, he, yeah. Right. Uh, he operates with fear. He oper he, he paints yeah. in shadow, you know, and he uh, mm -hmm. he just scares the shit out of people, and then uh, you know, basically basically says fly right or I'll be back, you know, and uh, it's Spring I'm it, yeah, I'm Batman, right? Uh, but Spring Hill Jack had who are you? I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. I'm Batman. Uh, but. You know, there's a lot. There's, there is a lot of similarity between Spring Hill Jack and and Batman. There's a direct, there's direct correlation. Bob well, Kane can, is that. Yeah, you, you know, can see it in so. some of those, uh, in some of those uh, pictures, videos we yeah. saw, in those still pictures that they were talking about, showing those are off of those Finny Dreadfuls. Yeah. That uh, you, you can tell the Batman influence from those. I mean, well, you know, uh, the way the, the cape is, and it has yeah. the waves on the bottom. It's not a straight mm -hmm. cape. You know, right. uh, it's holding his arms up and with the cape, uh, you know, in a quasi wings situation. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely tell well, there's similarities. Well, I mean, the yeah. cow, I mean, it's, there's uh, like several yeah. depictions of him having a cow. Yep. 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 Um, yeah. But also some of the Penny Dreadfuls uh, starring the Spring Hill Jack, there was like a series that made him into more of a hero. Yeah, right. I heard about uh, that, too. Yeah. And uh, in the. And so, yeah, uh, so there, you know, everybody becomes a hero in those Penny Dreadfuls, you know. I mean, Billy the Kid was the hero of his Penny Dreadfuls, and Billy Kid was a, you know, a gun, gun slinging thug kid, you know. He's outlaw, boy. <laughs> right. But, you know, it, it's something like romanticizing bad guy and making yeah. something that's appealing to, uh, especially female readers. And, uh, 
And so Spring Hill Jack kind of like became uh, a protagonist in some of these. Uh, and that's a direct tie in to Batman uh, comics, you know? Um, yeah. And so yeah. that is a real, I mean, it's a direct line there. It's not, not even a, a switch out, not even a vagary, no. you know, that no. Bob Kane literally ripped off the look of Spring Hill Jack and made Batman. Okay. That, that literally happened. You know, and some of the mo motions that you you see some of these comics where Batman would jump, the way he would jump was like what you saw in the Spring Hill Bat Jack, uh, you know, depictions, you know, right. except for the with the thigh high boots. He didn't have Batman doesn't have <laughs> thigh high boots. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and, and the white leathers. Uh, you didn't have that either. Uh, yeah. And the claw so, nails. You know? So. Uh, that's a, there are some differences, uh, but but yeah, um, so Spring Hill Jack, uh, you know, uh, between okay, so we look at the uh, the lore that this is some demonic figure, this de de demonic character who uh basically uh assaulted women and uh breathed f blue fire, had red eyes, and could jump over nine foot fences and uh and was you know, terrifying as hell. And he would like jump, come out of the night and terrify people. And then he would disappear. Uh, had a high pitched cackle and, uh, they, they was either demonic in, in, or a cryptid. Um, but he was like something supernatural, you know, that, uh, that didn't really give a reason why he did the things that he did. But, the, the whole supernatural angle is uh, pretty much that. Yeah, would you say that sums it up? Is there anything supernatural about him and about the lore that I didn't didn't just say? No. No, I, th I think you, probably, you pointed it out. A lot, a lot of that stuff, though, too, could be just uh, embellishment. Well, well, like we'll get to that. Lore. We'll get to that. Okay, so that's the lore. That's, that's like the extreme yeah. lore. Okay. Now, over here is the uh, is the extreme, like, you know, debunk, debunking. Okay, that this was a crazy guy or somebody who was a perverted, and somebody who was like horny and wanted to mess with women. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, on a dare or something, and he wore this outlandish costume to uh, scare people. And he ran around, and uh, he was athletic enough that he was able to scale walls and make it look like he jumped over them. And uh, yeah. maybe he knew the village very well. He was just like a local guy. And so he knew knew where where to duck in and where to duck out, and he, that's how he disappeared so fast. And oh, uh, cool. and everybody else was just like uh, out of the hysteria was seeing things, you know. Okay, so that's the that's the severe debunked version of it. Okay, but that would you say that's accurate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so in the middle, okay, mm -hmm. in the middle of that uh, is. That there was a guy who had some supernatural attributes and uh, and was like possessed by the devil or something and uh, did these these crazy uh, like supernatural things, but it was just a guy and it wasn't demonic. It was, you know, just a pervert. Uh, but it was somebody that genuinely had some supernatural characteristics and uh, and operated for well over fifty years. Uh, and so, you know, that, that are, he's like something that possessed people and they became Spring Hill Jack. Uh, that, that was one thing that was alleged. Um, uh, yes. that this is an entity that possesses people and they become like Spring Hill Jack for a season and then they go away. There's a Stephen King story that, uh, implies that. Um, well. you know, it's uh, out of a uh, graveyard shift, I think it was, uh, called Spring Hill Jack. Um, but that, that's, that's what he alleged. Okay. Now, usually I go for the truth is somewhere in the middle, and that would be like the middle, okay? But I'm going to say it's I'm leaning more towards the debunked, okay? Now, so mm -hmm. if, if we were going to go, you know, with plausible or, you know, debunked, I would say we're heading more to a debunked area. Um, I really well, think that this is a... Go ahead. Well, I mean, you, you are saying that the... Um ministers and the priests at the time were 
all about judgment and things like that and you know that's going to keep people on edge so you could it, what we could Fire, be dealing with is the biggest the biggest prank yeah. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> prank in history yeah somebody right. running around with yeah. this thing might maybe very athletic to that point mm -hmm. it's maybe a little ahead of time so it looks like right. it's something completely demonic satanic or mm -hmm. completely supernatural i don't know and, and you get to you get to like grope females and and, and terrify <laughs> <Yeah>. everybody <laughs> and then, then you get to then you get to run around and and, 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 and giggle while Grab everybody loses her shit. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a damn frat boy prank to me. I mean, it, sounds, it, it could it, be the biggest the prank. I don't know. It's a, it's somebody's been punked. That, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, I, I, yeah. I think you. I think you hit your. I think you hit it correctly. Where you're talking about the church was very fire and brimstone. Yeah. They mm -hmm. wanted. They they didn't have a lot of bibles for people to actually have on their own because most of these people. Didn't no, they read, didn't have any bibles. They didn't they read. Were, they're so chained into the, the pulpit. Priests, Right, the preachers right. and the priests were in charge of the knowledge, and so yeah. they would they would disseminate that knowledge in a way that would basically make. And the that's disseminate, not inseminate. Okay, whatever. Uh, I <laughs> disseminate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I had to get you back. You've been doing well, this to be all freaking show, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is that the you know the 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 priests and preachers were the keepers of the knowledge, and uh, the parishioners were pretty much mm -hmm. convinced, to Ooh. use a lack of a better term, or coerced yeah, into being right. obedient. Yeah. And much. so Spring Hill Jack could be looked at as something that was on the fringe, uh, something uh -huh. that was shunned. Oh, we don't want to, you know. Don't be like this guy, you know, with all the flashy well, clothes I mean, and all this stuff like time, that, running around grabbing people and whatnot. It's well, at that time, of, you know, women were like, uh, you know, if if there was like any like hint of impropriety, then uh, they would be blamed for it. So, oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. You know, well, if somebody were to walk up and grope you as a female, you would want to yeah. like give an excuse for why you got groped. <laughs> they, okay, they do that shit now in Islam. So, Hello. There, there you go. I see that. There okay. you go. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, we're gonna have no. to stone you now because somebody yeah. raped you. Uh, you know? punk. What a great yeah. enlightened religion well, that is. Anyway, quite, quite, a heavy, uh, <laughs> quite a heavy, quite a heavy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Punk. Off the hook today. Hey, Thank you, man. Yeah, we are. We said. We said. <laughs> uh, well, so I, I really, honestly, uh, I, I think, I think if we had a rating system here, uh, which I'm gonna start making up, like, you know, it, things for. Uh, you know, like the last show, you know, Philadelphia Experience Experiment, I think something happened. What's okay? an experiment? So I would say that would be an you know, ex experiment. Okay, experiment. But I would say that one was plausible. Okay, but this one, I'm going to say I'm leaning towards the bump. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I really honestly think that you all these things are basically uh, – People's imaginations, uh, uh, one prank that went awry that took on a life of its own. And uh, and it would explain it if people like pass this prank on to, gen to the next people down, then that's why this could happen 50 years on. And it's like, yeah. well, this is what actually happened back then, you know. Oh, let me re 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 reproduce this, you know. It feels yeah. like a local, like uh, insular little group of guys that was doing this and uh, like. It's your it's your turn to wear the costume and you know go grow up a woman you know this this that's the dare, and uh, so I could see this. Like, go ahead. Is there any history of say a secret society within that region that possibly could be perpetrating this stunt? Well, uh, in uh, <clears throat> basically uh, because the church <clears throat> was so all powerful back then. There were a whole bunch of groups that kind of like met in secret and like did naughty things to like, you know, right. uh, it, you know, cause kids are going to be kids, especially young males are going to be young males and, uh, right. And they're going to rebel one way or another. And, uh, this just sounds like you, this would be something that you would do to rebel. Look, you know, right. you have, you have, you have these instances where, okay, it was first, uh, reported, uh, in right. the 
1837 and, and maybe about a, mm -hmm. a decade prior as possible. Um, and it was kind of intermittent. And then I know the last reported, officially reported sighting was 1904 yeah. in, uh, I think, Liverpool. Right. Um, right. So well, the ghost, the, here's the, the thing. ghost what thing. Happened, Go ahead. What happened in that intervening, in that time in between 30, 1837 and 1904? How many wars or campaigns or things like that that England, Great Britain was involved with? To warrant well, they they stayed at war. Know. This is Victorian era. Well, they you have stayed to, yeah. at war. What where, where were they campaigning at? India, South Africa, yeah. things like that. So where they could have learned where they so, could have learned uh, the spouting flames from yeah, a faker. They could have used a lot of in yep, India. Exactly, yep. China as well. And climbing walls was something that uh, they did in India. They did. Oh, they had the rope climb thing. Uh, that, a lot of acrobatic yeah, stuff well, there, uh, there and in China as well. So. So if this was like a group of soldiers that came back from overseas and they had all this like knowledge of, of, you know, ledger domain that they learned from like India, uh, then, uh, you know, they just decided to like uh, play this prank, you know, and it would just take on a life of its own. But, um, uh, there was like a ghost that happened earlier and a guy got shot and oh, yeah, uh, the, maybe, the Hammersmith, uh, the Hammersmith uh, ghost. And the guy got shot, you know, uh, it was a hysteria and it was very similar to Spring Hill Jack. So maybe that's when it was initiated and, uh, somebody got shot. And so they stopped doing it for a while. And then Spring Hill Jack is when they brought, when, when they, they rediscovered it and they started doing it again. Mm -hmm. And then 50 years on, you know, some other people took it up and started doing it, you know, uh, yeah. And so if this was like a joke that was being passed from like group of guys to group of guys, you know, uh, over a period of time, then I would see they, they basically cr created their own cryptid. I mean, yeah. if you had a chance to do that, wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> if you had a chance. The thing is that you, you look at uh, these the, the reports and you take a look at the um, <laughs> if you don't. the, the you know, the humanoid cryptid element of it where, okay, they look like humans. Yeah. Until you get right up close to them and you face them and they've got these big red eyes and they breathe, you know, white and blue flame or smoke or something out of their mouth, whatever. And they can uh -huh. leap real high. Um, you know, how much uh, uh, of that could be either hysteria from the mm -hmm. people who were reporting it because – Outside of the report that could be adjacent to it, that was nine years earlier or ten years earlier, like I think it was yeah. like eighteen twenty six. Right. The shop. It was a guy, a shopkeeper, said he saw somebody jump over a nine foot high wall. And then in right. nineteen or in eighteen thirty seven, then you have the first official uh, report of. Spring. You know what the record yeah. for a high oh. jump is? <clears throat> no, the record for high jump is over. It's eight foot. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Yep. So with a with a slight boost or with a with a toe hold or whatever, that's that's easy easily scalable. You could easily scale a wall if you were athletic enough or you had some knowledge of of climbing or spelunking or whatever. Uh, and so, yep. I, I was thinking. Go ahead. Uh, um, I, I know, I know it's a bit of a stretch, but uh, and this is coming from video games, but. I was playing Ghost of Tsushima, and that's set in like the twelve, uh, since set in the twelve hundreds in uh, feudal Japan, and there's like knockout bombs and gas in that. So I was just thinking, that's eighteen hundreds at Springfield Jack. Could they have used gas, little like gas bombs, powder, that kind of thing, knockout gas? The ninjas Washington. came up with that. Ninja yeah. came up with that. Yeah, and the, weren't, the, weren't the Chinese like using fireworks and stuff? Yeah, centuries yeah. Before, exactly. yeah. Always, I'll, like, yeah. So, so if you got like some, uh, you know, these soldiers that traveled the world in, for the Victorian army, and most of them when they came home, they're still in their their twenties. Okay, they they entered the army when they're in their teens, and then you had like this tight knit of soldiers that came home and they're bored. And they're physically maybe. fit. They're very yeah. physically mm -hmm. fit. And they have all this knowledge of stuff like uh, ledger domain from overseas, maybe the ninjutsu, maybe an uh, Indian, uh, you know, the fire breathing thing. That's very easily yep. replicable. Yep. Okay. They do that now. Okay. And it and it really doesn't take that much knowledge to do it. You know, um, you know, pe people people learn to do it all the time. There's like a like a school that you can learn it 
you know, I, I could go and do it now. It's just basically spitting a lot lighter fluid onto in a certain yeah. way, right? It's easy to learn, right? And so, <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Michael Scott can do it. Anyone can. There you go. <laughs> but, but if you had this group of soldiers like uh, came back fresh from uh, war and they're bored and they're like a tight knit or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, and somebody warred every night and then somebody like you know went around and like hunted the Spring Hill Jack, because if you look at all the times that he was hunted, it was all young men that did the hunting. <clears throat> what well, if it was the same group? Yeah. And what if they like, oh my God, he jumped over a 12 foot wall. And I saw him do it. Yep. They could embellish that as part of the prank. And the letters, sending the letters to the mayor and saying that, uh, you know, this is happening. This is going on. And, I, you know, you need to address this. And so you could create hysteria so easily because, I mean, uh, there's a newspaper uh, producer. Uh, what is his name? They, they based Citizen Kane on him. Um, he was a William Randolph Hearst. William Randolph Hearst. Okay, Ray, William Randolph Hearst created Rose his. Rose. Yeah, <laughs> he created his own crime wave. Yes, nice. by by. Nice. Yeah, he 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 admitted to doing this. He bragged about it, but he created a crime wave in Chicago by yeah. simply putting all of the crime on front page and made people think that there was more crime, and it's the same amount of crime. But basically, people started buying his papers and, and more because of that. Yeah. And it might be there you go. he might it might be the forerunner of what we got now. This twenty four hours. He, he, he created that whole thing, Reefer Madness. Yeah, yeah he know? did. Yeah, yep. because yep. he wanted his lumber mills to, to profit, and, and they were wanted to use hemp and stuff because it was cheaper and right. it was stronger and lasted longer than wood. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, uh, so I mean, if a guy a guy can do that with newspapers, then maybe a, a group of of soldiers, like bored soldiers, could do this overseas. And by the way, regiment uh, lore is a thing, and so you could have the same regiment telling stories about something that they did. Yeah, you know, going going up through the same the regiment, it could be just regiment lore. So this could be the same regiment. And as the guys like get oh, so you know what we you know what Spring Hill Jack, you hear of Spring Hill Jack? That's us. We did yeah. that. Yeah. Good and deal. oh by the way, the costumes this is the costume. They probably still have the costume hanging around, right? Because it's old skin. Old skin lasts forever. Yep. You know you can have people wearing old skins uh from generations ago, right? Uh, that's why it's old scan. That's why people used it. But you can have the same costume 50 years later and you could, and then they could recreate it because they knew exactly how they did it the first time. So, yep. I mean, yep. Yep. None of this seems like it would be out of the realm of, uh, of humans conspiring to do something no. like this. It, and as a matter of fact, it sounds like something that, people should do okay I mean, right. This is, <laughs> right this is great prank it's a freaking great prank they created their own cryptid okay and yep and and that 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 prank created batman later <laughs> no. on yep that's there a hell go. of a prank that's a hell of a I'm prank <laughs> there you go anyway uh yeah. so what do you guys think you think I'm I'm full of shit? You think I'm all no? Guilty? I think you've got I think you've got some valid valid points. Uh, it's still you know the question is, what evidence is there outside of these police reports? Yeah, is there any physical evidence of any kind? Did they find anything? Is there anything documented outside of just what well, you have these the women's uh, women's uh, reports? Person. Yeah, right. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, the first re- person report uh, has some validity to it, but yeah. were they just bullshitting? To get well, I don't think the women were. I think the uh, women were legitimately terrified, and I think they legitimately felt some or something happened. And uh, but well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think the rest of it could just be easily, easily faked. Um, you know, because yeah, well, women were. This the guy or thing was never caught. You know, yeah, yeah. I guess no physical evidence, and, and there's no physical evidence. No. And eventually it went away. So Yeah, pretty much just like I said, the last reported sighting was 1904. 
Right. It's a long and I think ago. it was it's, it's relatively time. harmless because I don't think anybody got really hurt. And the uh, women got groped a little bit, but they were never yeah. like uh, assaulted. Well, there was one. There was know? one report that I read. It was a, a couple sisters walking down an alley, and he assaulted yeah. one of them. And and the report said he he hit her with his fists. And the way I read the report, it was like, okay, how long did this freaking attack take? Like thirty minutes, or was it three seconds, or three minutes, mm -hmm. or because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. the way it was worded it seemed like it was like from the from the witness's point of view, which is the other sister. That's who was telling the report to the cops. And it, it read it read like it was like a 30 minute ordeal. And then somebody showed up and they ran away. And it's like, yeah. what? Have you ever heard of a freaking assault that like you know that it, it would last a, well lasted 30 freaking minutes or, or an hour or whatever like well, that in the middle of that the broad thing about it is is most assaults don't even last five that minutes. Is. No, they don't. It's just a matter but, of but, but women you know, will tell you uh, that, that were assaulted. Yeah. They well, it took forever. hours, you know. It was you like know. hours. Yeah. Well, um, and that's what I'm saying. It's how much, how much of it was like provoked by this hysteria. Yeah. Using trickery, magic tricks, if you will, that uh, well, produces you know, uh, the produces right. the proper effect. You know, the hysteria. Maybe, maybe the hysteria. it wasn't Springfield Jack at all. It might have just been pinned on him. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if, if you're if you're looking to assault women in that, that time that time and period, I mean, copycat, you got an yeah, automatic copycat. alibi. You got copycat. automatic alibi right there. So yep. yeah, yep. yeah. So uh, so uh, anybody want to argue for supernatural cryptid, or uh, are we are we going to say this is a? Uh, the only thing I can say is that if it's not if it wasn't an orchestrated <laughs> prank, because there is no other evidence outside of witness testimony. The only other thing I could think it could be is a freaking extraterrestrial. <laughs> and that's it. And even then, it does look for, like life force. Well, according to Doctor Who, uh, you know, aliens do land a lot in uh, in in London. So, you know, yeah, that's that's popular for aliens. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was waiting to say, what, what, would, what would be the last sort of recorded time of demonic possession, for example? Yeah. If yeah, we're going good question. Right. Good question. Well, um, the, the demonic, Bible, because uh, that's a while ago. <laughs> it was a while well, ago. Yes, it was. Yes. Well, the church, yeah. the church keeps the records uh, that go pretty far back. And uh, the church has always, always had an exorcism, a group that did exorcism. So they're, yeah. they're still doing them today. As a matter of fact, they're doing more today than they ever have uh, yeah. exorcism. Mm. So, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, this world has kind of gone demonic uh, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of has. A little Just bit. Slightly. Uh, <laughs> slightly. So okay. Uh, so the, like like so the extreme uh, supernatural is this a supernatural cryptid demonic creature who's like assaulting women and uh, and terrorizing people. Uh, middle would be it's a human that's like a supernaturally possessed. Okay, and then the other side, the debunk side, would be that it's just a bunch of guys getting together and doing pranks and and natural hysteria is taking over. So, I think we're all kind of landing way over here on the debunk yeah. side. Yeah, I think. Debunk, I think. Yeah, I just think because you know you had it; it was in print, these yeah. reports and stuff like that. So, how do they get the sell their papers? They sensationalize the sightings of this yeah. thing, so it's Absolutely. it's jumping 10, 15 feet in the air. Yeah, you and know, exactly. and it's yeah. doing all these things, and you know, and you got women that are living lives of silent desperation. The, the idea that something could jump out of the the uh, night and, and like grope them. Right. Um, yeah, you know, I'm thinking yeah. a few women probably went out went out walking at night because there's a lot of women that were evidently still walking at night with the with them on the loose. And so yeah, I think they were like they were like, oh no, the Spring Hill Jack might get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just saying, oh, just saying, you know. Yep. Maybe, maybe give your fashion tips. Maybe give them fashion tips. Anyway, uh, all right. So that's uh that's been a. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the show for tonight. Uh, thank yep. you all for coming. Uh, thank you to the Cryptus and Conspiracies menu. Our, our, uh, people who showed up uh, for our yeah, show. Yes, and, for uh, us. Yes. Thank you for following us over to Rumble. And I'm going yep. to try to upload this to uh, uh, YouTube next week. You know, if YouTube will clear it. I don't know. Right. We'll find out. 
but uh <laughs> but yeah i will upload this to uh youtube uh, so people maybe can watch it over there yeah uh, if they thanks to all the there. people on x uh watching us uh, as well i think the majority of them yeah. are over there right now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, that's good great yeah, uh, X actually uh, will bring it up uh, if there's a show that's going live on X. They will actually bring it up and allow people to say to opt into watching it uh, if they're nice. if they're being followed. So, right, uh, right. That's, a, that's a good feature. I, uh -huh. I'm yep. hoping I'm, I'm hoping X will keep on expanding their features because I'd love to just like you know yeah stream nice. directly to them. You know yeah, it would be nice. Uh, just get the hell off of YouTube. YouTube sucks. Yeah, <laughs> screw YouTube. <laughs> Screw yeah. YouTube. Yeah, right. it's it's the up. screw tube. All right, yeah. you might anyway. want to edit that bit out if you stick it up on YouTube, though. <laughs> I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll edit it. Out. I was going to do the laugh, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, well, thank you all for uh, have a very good night. Remember, between the cryptid and the conspiracy, the truth is in the middle. Except, except tonight when it was over here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was the pudding was in the middle. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that, that, this was it definitely not the in the middle. The it was, it was all yeah. freaking over here. <laughs> middle of the right. woods. <laughs> the clean right, was in the everybody. middle of the donut. <laughs> Before we go too much further, all right. Good night, yeah. everybody. All right. Good night, good night, everybody. Good night.